Come lunchtime, I'm lightning. Morning, sir. Good morning, Bazadeth. Oh, I think you're a little early, my eager friend. Music practice, sir, so it's quarter past. Let him through, Mr. Wielden. He's one of the goodies, our musical genius. Wonderful solos. I don't think you'd be here today. I'm not. I'm just collecting that budget you wanted me to look at. I'll have to print it off for you. Oh, I'm not in any hurry. Um, a cup of coffee from the delightful Elaine. like that in a place like this. If we could get them all up to that standard. Well, if anyone can, it's Matt Bennett. Great, President. Thank you very much. Well, I think we can say that you're a new orchestra. Now then, Jenny. It's my job to give you the support that you need in the areas you needed most. And let us not forget, the last deputy you appointed barely saw out the time. Well, thank you, Leo. Or Morning, she... gents. Coffee for two. Or that she left at the same time as your other deputy. Morning, Elaine. Yes, please. Leaving you without any management team at all. You need good deputies. I've got them. Well, I'm going to help you keep them. The best way to keep good teachers is to come off special measures. The best way to come off special measures is to keep good teachers, or riddle dee Been here nearly a year now, Ian. Can't stay on special measures forever. Sink or swim. Is that an official warning? Paranoia does not suit you. Of course it's not official. I was merely making an observation. Oh, damn, I've got a senior staff meeting. Ian, you've got a senior staff meeting. I know, I know. Well, go on, then. But what about the budget? Oh, I think Elaine will know which knobs to twiddle. Oh, uh, Mr. Bennett, what you were saying in assembly? Well, I played the recorder at junior school. And me. I was in a concert and everything. So was I, you can. We can't have recorders in the orchestra. You'll have to find some other instrument. Oh, we don't mind, do we, Lee? Lots of practice. We're serious about it, sir. OK, I'll see you at orchestra practice any time this week. Oh, an audition. Don't forget to bring your recorders. Well tasty. Sponsorship at this level is serious stuff, and we have to make sure the money goes where it'll do the most good. Well, the one department that's not had any breaks in this school is music. £10,000 might make up for that. Education is not about playing the flute and thumping bongos. It's about the curriculum. Yes, God forbid that we should get them creatively involved or excited. Motivate them in one area and it spills over. You can bang on about creativity all you like. The fact is, if we're going to take this school out of special measures, we are going to have to improve our results. Mr. Wilden, uh, can I... Don't worry about me, I'll wait. I know we're all under pressure. But I don't think we should join the great lemming rush to get our sats up. Spot on, Kitty. You're really saying that all you care about is sats and performance-related play? Hey, you're as bad! It's all orchestra review. What about football? Oh, if you can't say anything sensible, Tony, don't say anything at all. Hands up! Anyone who agrees that sport is an equal contender for this money? 
Oh, well, so much for blowing 10 thou on white lines for the gym for... Matt. You smarmy little... Tony, calm, cool. Seems pretty obvious that the big contenders are Matt for music, Annie for IT. Any problems with that? Nope. Fine by me. No objections. Good. Show me your proposals. The sponsors wanted to go to something visible, something we could be proud of and point Do to. Do we even want to be sponsored by a supermarket? Yes. yes. I don't like this sort of situation. Deputy against deputy, one department fitting itself against the other. Well, neither do we. I'd much prefer it if every department got what it needed. Yeah. Well, if we can make them both happy. Uh, a new European fund has just been announced. It's giving out grants for specific arts projects. Um, let's see now. Yes, so, uh, I think you ought to go after the Saver Mart sponsorship. And Matt, if you went after the European money, fifteen thousand pounds. Fifteen? Well, up to. I don't think there's any way you're going to get the maximum, but no harm in aiming high. Who actually gets the European funds is down to me and my colleagues at the LEA. We have a special committee, a committee for everything. And you'd give us your backing? Well, I think I could be persuaded. Good, are they? The orchestra? They're great. Well, there you are, then. When do the Savermart directors come round the school? Friday. Friday. Perhaps you could provide some musical entertainment. We're not, we're not really ready for public engagement just yet. But if they're great... Well, considering we're still doing auditions... Well, yes, but only a few friendly sponsors is hardly the public. I'll tell you what, I could bring down some of my uh, grant committee as well. If you can impress them with your orchestra, you'll have killed two birds with one stone. A few modern tunes, a bit of the classics, and, well, e enough to warm our wizened old hearts. Be our pleasure. Be prepared to be amazed. There you are. Hope Park Orchestra is born. This time next year, the Albert Hall. Hope Park Orchestra, yay. Thanks. Right. Jenny, you did tell me that you'd been going to private music lessons, didn't you? For a year now. They're really good. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Mrs. Watson gives me a chocolate if I play my home with her. Single mistake. Um, what does this symbol mean here? Really nicely. Bazarev, what do you think? You can get him at the start, top of the page. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean? Oh, Bas, mate, it's nothing to get upset about. I just need to know how much you understand. I don't understand any of it. Just learn the tunes. You learn them? What, you mean parrot fashion? I've learnt Summertime. It's by Gershwin. I've learnt Elizabethan Serenade. Yeah, but you've been going longer than us. You all have this private music teacher, Mrs Watson. She took us to a concert once, and we had milkshakes. Fantastic. Well, I think you're all stars. I think you're heroes. If you can play like this when you can't read music, imagine how fantastic you're going to be when you can. Right, from the top. Hope Park students are not variety terms. They have a right to an education. They don't have to prove they deserve it. Neither does Matt. He's only been here a month. He's still getting to know the students. I would have appreciated you discussing this with me first. When battle lines are being drawn up in the staff room, you have to defuse the situation as quickly as possible. You were setting up your deputies so that one of them would be successful in getting funding and the other would fail. The result is, one of them would be happy and forward-looking and the other would be disgruntled and resentful. Ring any bells? If we're talking about setting one teacher against another, what about performance-related pay? League tables? There they were, snarling away at each other. All it took was just a little imagination to keep everyone happy. When Friday comes around, you might end up with 10K extra for the computers and another 15 for your orchestra. A good morning's work, do you think? Oh, and please, uh, give my thanks to Elaine for the excellent coffee.
Please, I'm begging you. All of you. Come on, any, any of you, any of you. I just need a hand in the occasional lesson for the next couple of days. Sorry, Matt. But you said it was no problem. It isn't. I just want to spend some time with the orchestra kids while the rest of them get on with something else. Kitty! I wish I could, but I'm way behind with my paperwork. Sally, <laughs> you're on your own, sunshine. I might be able to do third period on Thursday. Well, that would be hell. Let me see. I've got year eight, then. You're doing the sets for the play? Yeah, I can spend some time with Basilid. Thank you. Great. Uh, third period? I can do Thursday third period. You're all right, Sam. Well, that's good of you, Tone. He's a real team player. Aren't you a bloke? Playing the guitar. Great. Got to pull this one out the hat. <laughs> if it's magic you're into, you need a scantily clad young female assistant. Oh, but then, so many to choose from. John Arnold's birthday. Cake's all round. Get thee behind me, Satan. I'm meant to be watching my weight. Oh, get on with you. Woman likes a man with a bit of beef on him. Let the wee girl swoon over skinny wee lads. You appeal to the older woman. You do. Those that know a good thing when they see it. Mm. <sighs> of course, uh, you met the jog while you worked with him. Built up your arms, shoulders, neck. You'll be uh, watching your diet then, will you? I eat like a bird as it is. Yeah, Rod Al's me on a bad day. Uh, only one thing keeps you fit. You want to get a woman, mate. Right, thanks. I'll just go and ring up for one to be delivered. Yes, hello, dinner guests. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm wasting your time or if I'm the right sort of person, but, um, yes? Don't I sound like a man? Oh, right. Why is it so hard to get men, then? Of course I'm single. 39. No, properly single. No divorce. No, I'm not widowed. Heterosexual! That is allowed, is it? Hmm. Well, suppose I, I do give you my name. It doesn't go on any lists or anything, does it? Oh, right. Um, William. Jefferson. No, I'm sorry. This is... Uh, I'm sorry. Why are there never any letter headings? And look, half a dozen crumpled old envelopes. Elaine likes us to go cap in hand to her every time we need to write a letter. That way she can keep tabs on what's going on. I'll just run my own letterheads off on the computer then. Hmm. Something exciting? No, just something that needs to be said. Hmm. But you don't want Elaine to know about it? <laughs> no, I just want it handed out this side of Christmas. It's just a letter to the parents. No big secret. Yeah. No good getting in a strop, Keely. I told you all, if you want to be in the orchestra, you turn up in full school uniform. Terrible twosome strikes again. He's picking on us, sir. And we only turned up because we feel sorry for him. Much appreciated. <laughs> right, the rest of you, before you go, hands up who has private lessons from this Hi, Mrs. Hey. Watson. For your parents. Be sure to hand them over. Those girls seemed okay to me. School colours, sensible shoes. Be ashamed to lose Keely. It's not offered you volunteers for anything. She'll be back. Bit of a fan. It takes time and discipline to get even the best musicians to play well together. These are Not all of them. There's Bassinet, according to Mrs. Watson. Mrs. Watson would not recognise musical ability if it walked up and smacked her in the chops. She's okay. Yeah, she's great at handing out sweeties. Let's hope so. She's on the LEA Grants Committee. And if she likes you on Friday, you'll get a great big sweetie. And uh, if she doesn't... Well, and this is the same, Mrs. Watson? She teaches music from her living room. A good friend to Hope Park on every committee going. One of the great and good holding the purse strings. Jenny! Jan! 
Jess, have you got the letter I gave you? In my bag. Great, can I have it back, please? Gino, where's Baz left? Why do you want it back? Oh, so his dad picked him up. Is anyone here from the orchestra? No, sorry, not us. Jenny, Jenny, quick, please. Has anyone seen Millie Warner? Well, she gets the bus, the school bus. The fisher plane, the fisher plane, the fisher plane. God, that will have gone by now. You never see, sir. We passed the audition or what? Oh. Jamie! Jamie! Have you got the letter I gave you? No, What are we watching? Nothing. Just some wildlife. Huh? Oh. Him again. Have you been giving him marks out of ten? Oh, we don't do that much. Well, go on. Be honest. How many did you give him? Eight. It's a bit high. Eight and a half. Yeah? Who gets the ten, then? Yeah. I don't know. Do you ever met a ten? Well, how many do I get? See you go, girl. Ten. Uh -huh. Try again. We've got ten minutes. Bobby's in the field. Son's upstairs. So I'll ask you again. Where do you think you're going? Why don't you tell me? How are you? I believe you've met Mr. Pal. Bazadeh's father. Yes, of course. Please come in. I have received a letter, Mr. George, hmm? and my wife and I are very concerned. Who is this Mr. Bennett? He's one of the new deputy heads. Please sit down. Tea all round? Yes, thanks, Elaine. It'll take more than a cup of tea. I had half a mind to bring a solicitor with me. Have you got clean knickers on? Why? Because my mammy always said you should have clean underwear on in case you were knocked down by a bus. And your bus is in there, waiting for you. If it wasn't for my private music lessons over the past two years, you wouldn't have any orchestra at all. When I start off with these children, they have not one idea of music, not one. But. The parents expect results, and I get them results. You've been teaching Bazada for once a week for two years. Is that right, Mr. Powell? Yes. Twenty pounds a week. That's over two thousand pounds for the snowman theme, and I will always love you. I think what Mr. Bennett was trying to suggest is that now that we have a music teacher again and we're building up the orchestra... Excuse me. <coughs> uh, ah, yes. I strongly recommend that you reassess your son's need for extra tuition now that I am in charge of music. I really want to do what is best. Mrs. Watson is very kind. She takes the children to museums, to concerts. Yes, but she doesn't teach them music. Mr. Bennett, how many of these letters did you send out? Six. They simply inform parents that their children are now getting regular tuition at school. Uh, <clears throat> just a minute. Bazadov's understanding of musical notation is far below what one would expect after two years of music lessons. Look, I don't know what you're expected to teach when you started. 
But these days it's not enough to learn tunes by heart. Now, if you can't cope with that, maybe you should think about retiring. That's enough, Mr. Bennett. I have a lesson to go to. I think this is rather more important. You can't have a room full of unsupervised students. You better go, Mr. Bennett. I'll see you later. Well, you certainly tore a strip of him. I'm so sorry about this, Mr. Powell. Uh, we're having an orchestra performance on Friday. Maybe you'd like to come see what we're doing and then make up your own mind as to any extra lessons, OK? Uh, Elaine, could you show Mr. Powell to the front door, please? Thanks. Thank you. For one professional to do this to another is completely unacceptable. I'm sorry Matt was so rude. There's no excuse for it. I, I love teaching. I, I look forward to every lesson. They come to me year after year. Mrs. Watson, can Bazadef read music? Thanks for telling me about all this. It was good seeing you again. We'll see you on Friday? Yes. Although why we should award our grant to someone so rude. You'll be giving it to the school and the students, not to him. You wouldn't let a silly incident like this affect your judgment, would you? He's new to the school. I wish he'd been wiser, but he's keen, enthusiastic. Can't be bad, can it? You are arrogant, thoughtless, impetuous, irresponsible. You're my deputy. I shouldn't have to check every piece of correspondence you send out. The kids only go along with that woman because she's cuddly and she gives them sweets. They keep her going. She's a lonely woman. You could have dealt with it in a kinder way. I didn't expect the parents to show her the letter and I didn't know that she was one of the great and good on the LEA Grants Committee. Well, you could have discussed it with me. I would have told you. That's a laugh. 30 seconds with you and you're looking at your watch and edging out the door. Well, you've got my full attention now, haven't you? And it's what we do now that matters. Matt, how many times do I have to ask you to sort out your time? T sorry. Won't be long. Right, sorry, sorry. We'll have to find some way to rescue this situation. You've got six musicians who have clocked up a sum total of ten years with that woman, and not one of them, not one, can read even the simplest piece of music. What would you have done? You can't just trample over fellow professionals like that. Just concentrate on what your students are doing in school. Leave the parents to do the parenting. If they want to throw away their money, it's up to them. While you're here... I'm not here. I'm back at my desk doing what I should have been doing for the last hour. I've spoken to the technical support service about the IT package. Honey, please. Not now. <laughs> Annie. The desk can wait. This IT package... Enthrall me. I can't run a department and teach and do all of the deputy duties. I'm sure once he's got the orchestra through tomorrow, he'll be back on course. I was working on the timetable until 11 last night, and I still can't get year nine signed off because he's too busy with dancing with Queen. I know, if I hear it one more time. Oh, but, sir. Ah, thank you, Trudy. If you could just cut him some slack. Music's a priority for us. When I came for my interview, you told me IT was your priority. We have 650 pupils on the roll and not enough money to go around. I have a lot of priorities. That's a cop-out. This is the first conversation we have had one-to-one -one since I came here. Well, we've had it now, and I'll take action. Not so much a deputy, more a sort of dog's body. Yes, thank you. I've got the message in stereo. Mr. George. Uh, no one would miss me, Keely. What are you looking at? 
nothing. Just thinking. Be good, wouldn't it? If we could just like plug in and know what someone else was thinking. Lovely. Yeah, that's the thing. I want you tuning into my fantasies, would I? I'd go grey overnight, would I? Yeah. <laughs> Do you still have fantasies, sir? Everyone does. They just change a bit over the years. Mine are all about the LEA and maths books. <laughs> yeah, okay then, Kitty Porter. I'm all right, sir. You're coming tomorrow to this concert thing. I thought you packed it in. Oh, I would have, but Liana's gone on in. Oh, they all are. The love god. Mr. Bennett. He's well fit, then, is he? Duh. Is Pope Jewish? Yes, lovely. Teaching, I'm taking the orchestra. I have to parade before Leo Wielder tomorrow. You're leaving Annie to do all the deputy duties. She gets all the classroom time she needs for her subject. I get the kids once a week. If I ever teach them anything worthwhile, it has to be out of hours. I haven't been home before seven for weeks. Tough. That's the job, Matt. You're erecting a load of hurdles for yourself. Annie should be your best friend at Hope Park. Get the year nine timetables sorted. I can't be doing with deputies bickering like a pair of ten-year-olds. Make sure you support her tomorrow. She deserves this sponsorship deal. I'm nearly 40, Mike. And this job isn't getting any easier. And the next generation of bright young things is coming up fast. And I can't even keep up with the paperwork. Bin it. Bet it wouldn't make any difference if you did. Huh. Until the SATs, or the end of year, or the budget meeting, or... We've got a deadline for coming off special measures. And I don't know how many more battles I can take on. It's like everything I thought I was going to achieve is just slipping away through my fingers. Or as well, at the peak of our success, aren't I? It's not about success. I go home knackered, and there's no one there. But apart from that, everything's all right, is it? I don't suppose you fancy your boys' night out tonight, do you? Sorry, mate. No can do. It's wife's night class, so I've got the kids. You'd only slow me down, an old married bloke like you. Scare off all the girls. I feel a knot on the tiles coming up. Like the old tiles. <laughs> That's great. You said next Monday. Yeah, I was being a bit of a bug. Sorry. Look, I was wondering. Fancy going for a quick drink? No, thanks. I've got an entire night off. It's Jeff's away. I'm going home to make myself an indecent little large supper and pig out in front of the soap. A pizza, then? Look, I'm after an early night, too. For tomorrow's concert, you'll still catch your soaps. Please. I owe you. My treat. Pipe of peace and all that. I'd like to get to a point where you and I can really pull together. And I know that I tease the future and all that. But music matters so much. But not at the cost of IT. No danger of that. Music's already been sidelined by the curriculum, so the only way I can get it to the kids is by exciting them so much they want to do it in their spare time. We don't have to be on opposite sides, do we? are great. You get something like this and they pull out all the stops. Really blow your socks off. I'm sure they'll be fine. Oh, and they're really looking forward to all the instruments we'll be able to buy. 
and we'll sweeten your sponsors for you. <laughs> Good try, Matt. Sorry? A boyish smile, disarming honesty, touch of a little boy, vulnerability. Trying to pull that poor bloody rabbit out of the hat again. Trouble is, I've seen it before, and I'm unimpressed. Right. Seen what? The Matt Bennett schmooze. You don't have to work so hard at it. You've already charmed everyone. They think you're the beast bloody knees. <laughs> but you can be as crap as you like at teamwork, and you are. You can avoid paperwork all day long, and you do. And you can charm bollocks off the head in the LEA, and you have, no. and you'll still be top of the popularity poll. But I don't care what public school you went to. I don't think less of you or more of you. And I don't care how charming you are either. I just care about how well you do your job. I expect you to pull your weight. And if you don't, a piece of pizza and a beer doesn't do it for you. I'm not that much of a pushover. Here's my car. See you in the morning. you'd be polishing your trumpet. She wasn't having any of it. How are you doing? Not that great. You? Well, I should be getting home. I've got 20 scores to do for tomorrow's stupid sponsor's visit. I'm not stopping either. I'll probably have more to drink tonight than I have in the last three months, but, um, um whatever he's having. Thanks. Uh, whiskey and ginger. She's not one of your conquests, then. Who? I saw you leaving with her. You told me to make her my best friend, so I tried. None of my business. As long as it doesn't affect your work. So long as what ginger. doesn't? Working your way through the females in the staff room. <laughs> Bloody hell, I've only been here a month. You know your trouble. Yes, you're charming. Yes, you're ambitious. Okay, you're a bit arrogant. I'm not. Oh, look at the way you spoke to Mrs. Gage. Watson. Just because she's not quite up to your standards. We are all superior to that woman. She is a lousy teacher. There are ways of talking to people. You're a snob, Matt. I am. I am so sick of this. Bazalev's father is an office cleaner and his mother makes loose covers at home for a pittance, but they've paid their hard-earned money to that lazy, complacent, greedy cow because they don't want their son to grow up to be an outsider in this great free country of ours. Well, they're lucky if they earn four quid an hour, and you are so busy protecting Mrs. Watson's 20 quid an hour, you don't give a toss about them. Oh, and I'm a snob. You rub people up the wrong way. Keely will come back. She's a bit of a fan. You're jealous. Keely Porter, please. But now you mention it, I have done a hell of a lot of work with that girl. You are. And putting Tony's nose out of joint all the time. The man with one brain cell to every gallon of testosterone. There you go again. It's your job to unite the staff, not divide them. No, mate, that is not my job. That is your job. If you have a divided staff, it is of your own doing. Come on now, gentlemen. That staff meeting was out of control. It's called staff participation. I wanted to know the consensus about the sponsorship money. Oh, well, if you throw a scrap of meat to a pack of dogs, you have to expect a fight. Oi! Let's keep it down a bit. All we're doing is talking. <laughs> You're rowing. Talking! And very nicely too, sir, but just too loud. Why don't we go back to our posh wifey now, sir? Let her tuck us up in bed. <laughs> we go again. I am not posh, all loud, all rowing! You're drunk. He's not drunk. My bar, my decision. And you're two very inebriated gentlemen. <laughs> Just take little Lord Fauntleroy there and go Little off. Lord...
Then you got. Let's see, boys. I was eight. No rows, no dramas. My dad just walked away. Had another son, another daughter, another life. And we were miserable, stone, broke. But you went to a private school. My dad paid the fees direct to the school. Not a penny more. Public school and posh friends. And then home to a two-up, two-down terraced house in the poorest part of town. Mum was great. I mean, she got a job at Marks and Sparks, made a career out of it. Did you ever see your father again? When I was at uni, I looked him up. Gracious house in the country. Big red-faced man. I thought it was going to be momentous. But he meant nothing to me. I grew up without a dad. We died when I was 12. It's tough. But school taught me how to talk proper and get on with anyone from any walk of life. <laughs> Except Annie Gilbert. I got my A-levels and onto uni, and here I am. Down the nick. <laughs> oh, no one must hear of this, ever. Ever. We'll look back on this in years to come and laugh. How we'll laugh. And no one will know why. Got her. She'll be here in 20 minutes. Who? Well, the woman you gave us a character reference last night. We've just given her a call, and she's coming straight over. I'll drop you at your place first, Ian, and then I'll take Matt to his. You can both manage into work, can you? I'll get the bus. Yeah, I can walk. I'll taxi. I do not consider this to be a part of my routine duties. And I would remind you that if you're caught in this state again, you won't get away with it quite so lightly. You'll be up before the magistrates, and it'll be all over the papers. <laughs> I make it you've got uh, three hours, Matt, before Leo Wielden and my sponsors arrive to be entertained by your great orchestra. And you, Head, you have Mr. Powell to deal with, and any other parents who have caught up with Matt's letter. <sighs> Thank God you're both on top form. Mr. George, how did you go last night then? Night on the tiles, good was it? It's okay. I need more than that, my liege. It's very nice. And afterwards? For crying out. What? Did you spend the night in your bed or somewhere else entirely? Somewhere else entirely. That's my boy. Uh, yes, I have teacher, Ian George. Ian, I'd like you to meet Lord Redmond, the chairman of the Saber Mart chain. And uh, Laura, you already know, the Saber Mart accountant. Good to meet you. Hello again. We're very excited about your sponsorship. Should we?
That was tremendous. Really enjoyed it. Are we getting a solo from Bazadev? It's only been with us a few weeks. Patrick and Harriet, I mean, look at you. A load of saddos or what? We just done something so cool, so great. We just put on our first public gig. It was awful. They didn't exactly give us a standing ovation, did they? Well, because they're ignorant. Who cares what they think? Coming in here and ogling us. Come the end of term, we're putting on a concert, a proper one, for the school and parents and everyone. Bazadev, you're going to do a solo. Walking in the yard. No. A new one. Matt and Nina, you're going to do a duet on the piano. And me and Liana, we'll do... We'll do a Vanessa May thing. We haven't got any more violins. <laughs> then we'll get them. And we won't be sending you any invite, not unless you give us new stuff. Liana, not too carried away, please. Um, Mr. Bennett, um, young people, I'm afraid there's no chance of any extra money this year. But, but that's no reflection on any of you. We do appreciate the concert. In fact, I'd like to think of it as a work in progress. And uh, as such, I thought it was very promising, really. Thank you. You were fine. All of you. If it wasn't a musical triumph, it's not your fault. It was ours. Mine. No. It's mine. It's her fault. She's the one that told us we were good. But we're not. We're rubbish. I came every week, Mrs. Watson. Why don't you tell me it was a whole big fat waste of time? It's not all bad, Ian. The Sabermark people were very impressed with Annie's department. How impressed? Very. IT has got its sponsorship. Well, thank God for that. But the orchestra still has to manage with £3.50 a year. Mm. Well, we'd be a laughing stock if we gave the European grant. Perhaps one day when the strings can play in tune and the flautists know which end to put in their mouths, the years will fly past. Mr. Wilden. It was your bright idea to apply for the money and to put on the concert. You didn't discuss it with me, you give me a chance to step back from this. You put Matt in an impossible position and piled the pressure on. My deputies deserve better. Touché, Mr. George. Quite right. Good job they've got you to support them, eh? League Division 1, Annie Gilbert 3, Matt Bennett now. You completely ruined my chances, you great, smarmy, arrogant. You turned it into a fiasco, a pantomime, a bloody farce. Yes, yes, yes. And what are you going to do with the money? You got it. You got your £10,000. Oh, you <laughs> To be Keely, I'm 73. Well, if we showed them that we really cared, it might make a difference. I did my best for you, sir. I know. And for Mr. Bennett. So 
Oh, no, Miss shall call you was. I did it for you, sir. That Mr. Bennett, well, he's well fit and that, but, you know, he's a bit full of himself, isn't he? Thinks he's it. The Lamb of God. Have I got any nicknames? I can't tell you. Victor Meldrew, I bet. Me and Lee, we decided one day when we're earning like mega, we're going to take you out for a meal or something. We're going to tell you everything that goes on in this place that you don't know about. There's a lot I don't know about, is there? God, you'd go into shock, sir. All right. He's the boss. Or top totty. And if you're in a strop, MMM. Mean, moody and magnificent. Don't tell no one I told you. <laughs> right, second half. Make room for the Colossus who bestrides your puny human games. <laughs> Hope you were is back tomorrow night at 9.30. Five years on and the case of O.J. Simpson is as controversial as ever.